D and D twenty episode seven. Lots to be said, so try to keep up. So Rolo and Dodo go off, uh, and Rolo comments that in the past few days he's noticed that the city is under suspiciously heavy guard. He says that he also feels that something dark is in the earth. Uh, just then the pair find that they are being followed by a group of elves. As they turn they find out that it is the city guard, the high elf militia. The sergeant appro approaches them and announces that they are under arrest for suspicion of espionage. They are then handcuffed and led toward the barracks. Sai exiting the palace is able to see two dwarves being led off. Curious, he trails behind them. And just before they cross the threshold into uh, the gated barracks, Sai steps out and grabs the attention of the band of elves. What do you think you're doing with my friend? Sai calls out. The sergeant pushes past his group and replies, These dwarves are under arrest for suspicion of espionage. I wouldn't happen to change your mind now, would I, sergeant? Sai questions with the creepiest, most menacing smile. Thanks to the intimidation role, the sergeant looks shaken. He takes a quick look just to see if the rest of his soldiers are still there, and Sai hears sword hilts clicking out of their sheaths. You will have to speak with Thorndal to help them. He's the captain of the guard, the sergeant replies shakily. Sai puts on the kindest smile he can muster. Thank you for your help, sergeant. Thoroughly creeping him out, the sergeant backs away. As he takes the dwarves, Sai calls out, Don't do anything stupid, Dodo. The two dwarves are each thrown in an individual cell. While they search the stones for means of escape, they find that it is very well built. Dodo strikes up a conversation with the people across from him on either side of Rolo. A human mercenary named Caden a twin gnomes, Maisie and Daisy, and a halfling, Alfie. He garners that they have been in there for quite a while, and that all of them have been accused for suspicion of espionage. Meanwhile, Sai bursts into House Telendal. Seeing Mirandus, he demands to know where Elisar is. Not waiting for him to finish his sentence, Sai barges into Elisar's study. Elisar stands as Sai enters, and asks how he can be of service. You promised me the safety of my companions, Sai says. Explain the dwarf's arrest. I assure you, Lord Sai, Elisar replies, I do not know anything of this. I will make the proper appointments to sort this matter out. Sai slams the desk. That's not good enough, Elisar. Know your place, uh, Elisar replies sternly. There are certain rules that have to be followed. Sai pulls off immediately. My apologies, I know you will do your best with this matter, he, he says, as he turns to leave. Just then, Lord Veer, Tyleaf, and Mokad enter the common room. They see Sai pacing. Is something the matter, Lord Veer asks? Dodo and his cousin have been arrested, Sai says. We have to do something, don't we? Elisar is taking care of the matter, Siler says matter-of-factly. Wanting to change the subject, he asks, how are your exploits in the city? I received word from Edmund and wrote it here, Lorvir says, handing him the paper. I don't like it, Sai says flatly. Vague, Lorvir admits, but you can't expect much more with 25 words, can you? That's not what I mean, Sai interjects. This, he isn't straight to the point. Edmund is known for duty, and if he really wanted to warn the elves, would he not give more information rather than mindless pleasantries? I can't believe you, Lorvir says. He's worried about us. It's called being considerate. You've been a miserable skeptic since the day we've met. You haven't changed a bit, she says pointedly. Siler strings a series of profanities 
in a language neither Lorvir nor Tylee can understand. But, in the corner, Mokot's eyebrows raise in shock. Siler continues in common. I will not be questioned by a girl whose head is so far up in the clouds she doesn't see what's right in front of her. And I won't be judged by a moody nobody with trust issues, she shoots back. Trust, Siler scoffs? I trusted you that night and you were seriously making me regret the decision. Siler turns his heels and storms off. He's usually not like this, Mokot meekly interjects. From the doorway, Mokot hears his name being yelled. Off you go, boy. Lady Siler needs somebody to walk with her. And it seems you're the only person he cares to be around, Lorvir sarcastically remarks through gritted teeth. Lorvir and Tyleaf decide to send a letter via animal carrier to the King of Brenziri to gather more information in order to sway the elves of this warning. Meanwhile in the prison, Dodo finds out that there is a man named Yorick to the cell on his left and a female orc named Kolda to his right. Yorick, telling him that he has been there for a long time, has noticed that the guards are unnaturally aggressive, almost violent towards anybody who tries escape. And every so often they take a prisoner away, never to be seen again. Meanwhile, Sionis Walk searches for a library. He is directed to the largest tree he has ever seen. The leaves are made of emeralds. It is called the Archives. Sai tries to bluff his way, saying that he has royal permission, but is denied when he is, fails to produce proof. He remembers a scholomancer Melander, a professor mentioned in Elisar's journal and goes off to find him at a nearby school. He enters the room and finds an elf so old he shows signs of age. Melander confesses that he cannot take Siler into the archives, but assures him that he is confident he can help. He has studied the archives extensively. Siler sits down and asks of House Valiner the origins of the house and finds out that they are the second royal family to rule. Though they were not always royal, House Valinar married into power 20,000 years ago. Siler stopping Malander's lecture narrows his questioning down. Is there something strange in House Valinar's history? Sai asks. A lapse uh, event that happened. Malander glares at Sai for a good long while, judgingly. Uh, thoroughly inspecting him. He asks for help up and heads towards the bookshelf. And after taking a book down from the shelf, a red bound book, he waves his hand over it and the book changes into a black tome. This is a picture of your great great grandfather, Amelion the Third, he says, showing Siler the book. Siler is startled by Melander's knowledge of his identity, but says nothing. And this, Melander flipping through the pages, is a picture of your great grandfather, Cathurion. The pictures are identical in nature. Melander makes Sai swear to the secrecy as he leaves the school, taking in this information. The next day, Elisar leads the party to Throndal's office. Tyleaf and Mokot are quick to shoot arguments and logic toward the stubborn and suspiciously paranoid captain. Elisar steps in, saying that the party is under royal protection, and even within the party itself, royal blood runs. Lorvir and Tyleaf give Siler a haughty look. Throndal agrees for the dwarves to be brought up so that uh, the party may converse with them. Unbeknownst to the dwarves below, guards approach and open their cells, both approaching with manacles. Thinking that the dwarves were about to be led away, never to be seen again, they engage the elves. Overpowering one and killing the other, Dodo and Rolo begin their march to the surface, freeing the other prisoners along the way. Starting to hear the commotion below, Siler senses trouble and sends Elisar and Mirandas away saying to contact the prince and to expect their company. 
The prisoners break through the door and Ty Leaf casting Gust of Wind knocks them all back. All the while, Siler shouts at Thrandall to stand his men down by royal order. Surprisingly, Thrandall listens and Siler continues saying to dismiss his men and they would sort out this misunderstanding. At that instant, Thrandall swings around moving to slice Siler's head off and in a blink of an eye, Kolda, the half-orc, is there with two batons smashed into the captain of the guard's face. His body falls limp to the ground. The guards, not knowing what to do, heed Siler's order. The guards are disarmed and herded into the corner by the prisoners. Dodo questions one of the guards, asking what is done with the prisoners who are taken away. They are taken to the lowest level, replied one. All but Sai go down, accompanied by Yorick and Kolda, and upon reaching the lowest level, they come across a door engraved with unholy runes. Mokot, detecting magic, senses a trap, and Lorvir is quickly able to disable the door. The door swings open, revealing a carnal house. Dead bodies are strung up and drained of their blood, runes on the wall written in blood. Tyleef's wolf and Lorvir rush upstairs, followed closely by the rest. Tyleef motions for Sai to follow, and he too sees this gruesome sight. Tyleef, Siler, and Mokot take a closer look along with Dodo, trying to find a secret door or hidden passage finds nothing in the stone walls. Siler sees an open tome and grabs it, Mokot following his lead, grabbing what few books and tomes there were. Upstairs in Throndal's office, the party goes over the books. It is indeed blood magic. Anything thought impossible with normal magic is now possible with blood as its fuel. They uncover that the rituals were made to increase one's life, and that in order to do so, one must sacrifice his offspring. Just then, Mirandus runs in out of breath. He says that there is something happening outside. The palace has been locked down and the guards increased, he says. And what of Elisar? Was he able to make contact with the prince, demands Siler. He was not, my lord. That wraps up another episode of D&D 20. Make sure to leave your questions and creative comments and theories below, and I'll see you guys next week. Dodo questions one of the guards, asking what is done with the prisoners who are taken away. Really? Seri- Seriously?